I'm offering now a little guided meditation. And the intention of this meditation is to support us in feeling more equipped, more safe, more invited to glean the wisdom, the clarity, the empowerment that is offered in the present moment. We all know what it's like to lose our minds in strategizing, in looking into the past, into the future, all around, replaying events, anticipating experiences, negotiating possibilities, all because we fear that there's something happening. There's a relationship. There's an experience that is threatening. We see life often as antagonistic to our own wellness. And so we live in a defensive state. And when we live in defense, we never have the opportunity to abide and reap the deep sustenance and clarity that this present moment offers. It's as if in all of our efforts to protect and to defend that we're projecting this hologram, this illusion of reality, what things are and what it wants to do to us, the ways that life is out to get us. And we have no choice then but to respond in like, to become defensive. Otherwise, we'll lose, we'll be hurt, we'll be betrayed, we'll be abandoned, we'll lose our power. And there's that story that the most vulnerable and afraid places inside of us, the places that feel the most prone to being hurt, those are the very places where we will resist being with it. It's exactly where we will resist really settling into it, getting to know it, exploring ourselves there. Rather, those are the places where we become hard. That's where we strategize. That's where we fight this antagonistic life. And we don't realize it, but we're actually holding ourselves in place. We're keeping our hurt as hurt. We fix our reality and thus our relationships and our experiences to stay in this antagonistic perception. And people and life will show up predictably for us because we've decided how it is. And so we continue to stay hurt and life continues to prove to us that we're hurt. And so we win. We are right. We're right. Life is unsafe. We are being hurt. We have to be defensive. We are being victimized. We're right. But at least we're right. And on the journey, as we all know as well, we grow not by being right, but by being in this moment. 
we decide that suffering but being right is less important than living now, which seems crazy because living now means you might just be uncomfortable. Living now means it's not always pretty. Living now means it may not be what you prefer. But it's literally right now. And everything that's true blossoms from here. Like everything. So it becomes a choice for all of us. And we make this choice all the time. In The Course in Miracles, there's a teaching, a statement, or an invitation, which is, I think it goes, I can choose peace instead. And I find that choosing peace isn't about moving into some kind of euphoric state where suddenly things feel great. Choosing peace to me, means not resisting. Wherever we resist is where there's something unresolved, some battle that still needs to be fought. And there's no way to see anything or anyone clearly for what it is. But to choose peace means I'm okay with this. This. Trungpa Rinpoche, uh, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, describes everything can be uh, received as a stepping stone. That when we come into meditation, the mental trick that often eludes us is we will conceive of this ideal state of where we should be or what peace looks like. And yet emotions, thoughts, memories, sensations, and arguments and dialogues will arise in our mind. And if we regard everything that arises as a stepping stone, it basically means this too. This is what I get to allow right now. As opposed to struggling it or struggling against it or getting stuck in it and trying to resolve some fantasy of suffering and struggle. Choosing peace is to say, this is okay. This is okay. And this doesn't mean that is a statement of non-action or a statement of compliance or complacency. It means it's okay. It means the foundation of our choices isn't to right a wrong, isn't to affect an outcome because before now, things were bad, and now they're good. If I say this, everything will be better now. We keep on attempting to do that, where we think that our actions, our choices, will bring us the peace that we're seeking. But it's kind of like getting our ducks all in a row, but then one of the ducks gets out of the row, so we put it back in. Then something else happens. So we fix it. Life is always going to be messy. There's always something that's arising. And if we direct our salvation towards knowing how to deal with it, like, I will say this thing. The next time this happens, I'll do this. This is what I got to do for this person in this relationship. This is how I'm going to fix that. Or this is how I'm going to treat my body. Or this is the perfect diet. All this strategizing and basically holding ourselves in such a battle with life to accept that this too is okay. 
means I don't need an answer. I don't need to make this a problem to solve. Rather, I can allow it to be wholly complete as it is. And in that sense, we're not even defining it. Everything becomes a curious mystery. What is this? You know, we feel sensations and emotions, but we quickly crystallize it and make it a thing. I feel this way around this person. There's a problem with that person, or I got to resolve a thing with that person, or I got to talk to this person about this issue. Suddenly what we feel is linked to an object. We do this all the time. Everything that we are uncomfortable with is actually just an uh, objectless internal experience. But we direct it with our minds towards object. And then we say in resolving our relationship to this object, time, place, person, thing, then I'll resolve these uncomfortable feelings. But this curious mystery, this curious beingness, it is such a faith, a beautiful faith, not a mystical, far out, incomprehensible faith. It's a faith that simply says, I am trusting this moment to just let it be. And who knows? That might bring an insight, a clarity, or a realization of, oh yeah, I notice that it feels aligned. There's a calling. There's a sense of rightness in doing this thing and saying this to this person. We are guided into action. And I, I've been really saying this a lot lately. We're guided into action. Not because it's like, I got to do this. It's a inner noticing of what wants to happen. And in a way, we can say then that our actions and what we do with our life from the stillness, it derives from a quiet place of noticing first and foremost, impersonally, what's wanted, what's true. We're not deciding if it's true. We're not deciding if that's what wants to happen. We're just noticing it. It's a living in a non-reactive way. And so using this as a stepping stone, very, very often we'll find there's actually nothing we need to do. Creation reflects this to us. You look at a flower, it's not like opening all the time and then closing. It's like, should I open now? Like, when do I open? It just opens when it does and it opens completely. And then it closes when it closes. Everything in the natural world, in a sense, is very present moment. It spontaneously acts. And so we create the space in our own lives to experience what it's like to be like the rest of reality, to live spontaneously, to live authentically. And if that means an individual is walking a path of planning and organizing things, then great. That's what their path wants to be. And it's a natural realization, right? Like awakeness, being awake to reality and to what the flow of life is can lead us in all kinds of directions. It's only our conceptions of what it looks like that are just conceptions. I invite you now to join me. I'm going to sit silently with you for a few minutes. We'll sit together for five minutes. And to quote Adyashanti, he often says, allow everything to be just as it is. Allow everything to be a stepping stone to what's now. And to notice as we allow, our body follows. 
our belly relaxes, our breath relaxes, our jaw, our eyes, our musculature. We give permission for our whole being to drop its defenses. Oh. 